some stock footage. Stretch that television budget. But it looks authentic. It gives it that authenticity. They're getting more authentic by the moment. The Air Force had spot, done spotted themselves a UFO. Boring office, but hey, it's military. It's like an episode of the X-Files, isn't it? Activate Project Falcon. <laughs> yes, you do. And maybe this is what happens. A UFO? It's the Enterprise, and it's the military complex telling you about these things. Send up some interceptors. Hello. <clears throat> hmm. In your mind, inner space, enterprise. Deliver military entertainment complex propaganda and clues to be decoded years later by those who seek a mountain boldly go or no trekkie gone before. Yeah. Here we go. The Nick, um, what tomorrow was yesterday, designed as a Galaxy Quest two-parter with the Naked Time, where they discover the secret of time travel with booze. So, this is where they ended up after the Naked Time and discovering the slingshot around the sun that saves the whales in Star Trek IV? Because of booze? Huh. Black Star. <laughs> Breakaway civilization sent you plunging through uh, science fiction television space. Got all shaken up, huh? Now nah, it wasn't a dark star. It was all the drinking from celebrating with the victory over the Gorn, Kirk. Remember? Just battle this thing. Might do more damage. See, Uhura's had a few too many. Nice panties. Scotty. Of course he's still with... Of course he's still with you and he's still on the floor. All right, got to reopen it. They, they just been celebrating Kirk's victory over the Gorn just a little too hard, that's all. Dark star. <laughs> Actually, I believe we now call them black holes. You'd think they would have known about black holes in the 60s, but they didn't. They knew about them in theory. Military complex knew about them, but they had to settle on a name. They test it through pop culture. It's interesting that... Except you went back in time, didn't you? You ever see the movie The Final Countdown with Kirk Douglas and the USS Nimitz, Martin Sheen, 1980? Same story, except it's a 1980 USS Nimitz going back to Pearl Harbor. Very Star Trek in it, in its uh, design and its dialogue and scenes and things. Not much action, a lot of talking with the characters about disobeying the prime directive kind of thing. Scenes like this, they'd actually try and contact Pearl Harbor and they'd, you know, they get old. <laughs> we get, get this. And it was on a Wednesday, wasn't it? Apollo 11? Ask Stanley Kubrick all about that and I got commentary for The Shining. Something this show got correct that uh, pretty much everyone else said was going to be in the 70s. How did this show get it so correct? And why are there movies like The Final Countdown with the same story? 
Maybe because things like this actually happen, and this is their way of telling us, without disobeying the Prime Directive. And you might want to get your shields up. They might be primitive, but they can still do damage, like a bunch of barbarians. This is a very clever way of working the UFO craze of the 60s into Star Trek and saying, oh, look, it's just the Enterprise, but that's why I hit my button a few times already. Um, I'm going to hit it a few more. Because a lot of UFOs... I'm not saying that all UFOs are military-made or us from the future. Some of them are. Some of them are aliens. It's it's very the military industrial entertainment complex is complex, and there's no one simple answer. Like there's no one alien race coming to us. It's not the Martians. It's not the little green men. There's also little gray men, and there's us from the future, and there's inner Earth civilizations and other dimensions. And it, yeah, I think the Men in Black's uh, offices, you know, they're they're. The galactic starport where everyone comes through with different agendas so this was a good way of telling the public there's no UFOs but at the same time putting the truth out there in plain sight for those that were initiated to see it uh, yeah see they can still damage you barbarians can still beat you up with a club you know You're not going to shoot him down, are you, Kurt? Oh, tractor beam, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the captured... But just like in the final countdown, they capture a, a Japanese pilot, a, a Pearl Harbor scout craft, and take him aboard. This is a very similar story. It makes you wonder how many times this has actually happened. It's, I assure you, it's more than once. Anyway, we're... Oh, beaming! Where's my... There's an emergency beam. Oh, okay. Proper candidate. Come in blind and... Turn him around. Come on. Light on Kirk's eyes, as always. He's illuminated the most. The most illuminated. This guy's to be initi initiated. John Christopher Christ Ofer mm -hmm. In real life I understand the actor Roger Perry real life United States Air Force but also <clears throat> happens to be military intelligence this actor we're looking at what technical advisement you think he might, or his friends might have given on this episode or this show? These same scenes are in the final countdown. Um, scenes just like this, asking the same questions, presenting the same situations. Huh. Got a lot to think about. Well, come aboard. We we got all the good stuff. And I have my booze now. As soon as Scotty shows up on screen. Good morning, Captain. Woo! But that's gonna pop something. <laughs> Welcome to a better future, my man. You're sure showing him a lot, too. The Navy, he asks. Not the Air Force? It's actually the Navy that oversees Area 51 and things like that. They traditionally have, for a number of reasons. Some of the power players in Majestic 12 that were in charge at the time were naval. 
World War Two, you know, a lot of naval heroes and things, but also a lot of the tradition back to the British and the Admiralty Law, uh, but also just a lot of uh, little green men. You know, hidden submarine bases in the middle of the desert. Uh, it hides funding. People would say, why would the Navy be in charge of planes in the desert? You know, deflects intra public uh, inquisition or inquiry. There should be inquisition. Maybe not. Maybe there's good reasons to keep things secret. Are people ready? He is ready. He's accepting it rather well. Woo, but he's still human. He's taking it in pretty well. He's not having a mental breakdown. A lot of people would. Christ is very disciplined. <laughs> this guy, this actor, acts like he's seen this stuff, but this character acts like he's seen this stuff before. He knows too much now. Exactly. Yep. Like military entertainment complex with the Montauk Project and other things. They're hiding it in plain sight right here. To see who is like Christ here, oh, Christopher. To be able to deal with it. Can we step up to a truly gal um, interstellar or galactic or spacefaring civilization? Oh, Hurst checking him out. <laughs> Maybe there's not a lot of real men in the future, except for Scotty. Yeah. But Spock's not quite human. She's like, ooh, this old fan is like getting a cowboy from the 19th century, you know, a real m -m -m man. Oh, he don't look so manly no more. At least he's not wearing red. Triangular table there, Kirk. A little Kubricky and monolithic table. With your Egyptian arc box in the back. Strange things for the captain of the ship to have. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry liked his women, didn't he? Sometimes maybe too much. Is, <laughs> is, is this some sort of uh, mild admission confession to Janice? Roddenberry likes his women a bit too much, or do you just like his women a bit too much? Now, everyone gives Shatner a hard time for banging the babes on the set, but Gene Roddenberry seems to be a lot more of the pan type than him. Yeah. Ooh, good chess move. This has happened to pilots that have chased UFOs. You gotta wonder what happened to them. Some didn't come back. I've been in this position a lot. Where I would like to tell people, but I can't. Some prudent decisions, like 
I couldn't tell about Hollywood mafias or that I did get whacked. Scotty! I can drink. <laughs> yes! Oh, I went down. I'm looking. Uh, my face looks like Scotty's there. <clears throat> rough. Rough. Oh. Not this episode is going to be a bit more fun than it's turned out to be. He figures it out quick. We can do that. Captain's log, star date, 31.13. 31.13. Love that number. That's when time no longer matters and we make contact with... Well, we like our 13s and our 31s, don't we? Knights and spookies. <clears throat> but um, if we expect, like, Starfleet to make contact with aliens thousands of years in advance of us, it's reasonable to assume that humans from our own world only a few hundred years prior could step up. Some do. That's why they contact people individually and not on the mass scale, because that's where the mass is. And by the bell curve space of time they're the profane not ready more of the final countdown the Japanese prisoner does try and escape of course oh a red shirt oh you poor red shirt you got to get your ass kicked aren't you yep but he's not going to get dead, so I can't smoke to that. Uh, oh, Kirk, let's hope you can handle a modern m -m -m man. Well, I guess he did. Well, he had surprise advantage. Yeah, healthy as a horse. No, he tried to do his duty the same you would, Kirk. That morality question that has no real answer. I love that Star Trek poses those questions. Leaves you to contemplate it rather than force-feeding you an answer. That's what communism does. Um, free thinking leaves you with the question, not the answer. There's no right answer here. You're supposed to think about it. That's what our heroes do. They're not proving their dominance. They're proving their ability to think and see possibilities. Yeah, I know that feeling too. What about his wife and children? Beam them up. Ooh. Shouldn't talk so loud, Kirk. Yeah. I don't like you after what I just heard there. You will. Well, hey, at least you know you're going to get laid at least once more. There's some good news there. Yeah, 
you're just going to have to pretend you never saw anything for the rest of your life. A lot of people have had to go... Th a lot of people have had to go through that. Um... Yeah. You go ahead and do that. Get the men in black neuralizer. This is changing locations, but these events have happened at the uh, in recent times when the filming of this. Back in the 50s. Thomas Mantell. And they probably have cross reference to other events. <laughs> Roswell. They're admitting it right there. They're telling you exactly what they're doing. This is another DC Fontana episode, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, her with her sources. I've mentioned her before. AFI, my school. She taught there. I didn't have screenwriting, but I had friends who did. Like Kirk with a crew. You have to roll the dice, Kirk. You have to take that human chance. Oh, that's right. You got to go down and beat up the guards in the base and do the. Or an adventurer. Thousands. In by the sixties they were admitting this. You see, they weren't just getting you comfortable with space travel and science and the they knew it was gonna be a Wednesday for Apollo eleven a couple years before. No, it's they're getting you use the men in black did show up on the set on the first season of Star Trek. I don't know which episode, but odds are we've passed it by now since we're more than halfway through the first season. Maybe it was this episode itself, but they showed up and told Leonard Nimoy that his character was important to get the public used to this reality. Uh, I believe Leonard Nimoy told Art Bell that when he was a guest on his program, the late great, both of them, Jedi Masters. Um, oh yeah, this is where Kirk does the overhang, grab the, the top of the door, the pineal position of the door. That's how he overcomes the enemies. Beaming in. Oh, woo. Remember, they always travel by light. They get where they're going by having more light. Right, Brother Masons? Kirk, let's hope you're uh, vaccinated to all the ailments of this planet. Oh, he brought Sulu with him. Interesting bit about Sulu. Of all th I didn't know when I was going to talk about this. I hope this episode I didn't know Sulu was going alone with Kirk here. Um, The Chinese... Be I know he's Japanese, but... The, uh, my chance to talk. Chinese space program began in the 1950s. Shin Su Shin. Caltech JPL United States Air Force. Worked on retrieved UFOs from Germany and Roswell. Chinese American. Blackballed during the Red Scare. Kind of like Brother Cecil B. DeMille. Sent back to China in 1955 as a prisoner exchange. And he took rocket secrets like Jack Parsons stuff with him. Kirk, opening doors of perception with thinking, with light. <sighs> How about that? Can you just make this stuff up or is it all part of the story? With no beginning and no end. Tomorrow is yesterday. I'll tell you about the Montauk. You know, you get Roswell and Germans and all that. Can't rule out the Montauk project. That's where all the paperclip scientists like Doc von Braun came ashore. And then went to work for Disney in Hollywood. All my old haunts. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It'd make the devil's own noise if you start it. Interesting choice of words, Sulu. Given that uh, JPL or Jack Parsons Laboratory, along with brother Alistair Crowley, the wickedest man on earth and the whole occult military complex, summoned interdimensional entities through that portal in Pasadena where Jessica took me and I got possessed. Yeah, time warp, stargates, it all connects. Um, remember, this is the Galaxy Quest two-parter, or what could have been another two-parter, to the naked time, like the naked Jedi, if you listen to my logs. Is he wearing purple? He's going to go down. Purple's a bad color. Is that bad coloring? That's oh, purplish. How do you know that the... Well, I guess they're the only things with... How do you know we don't have hidden weapons elsewhere? We might have some nanotech and implants. Oh, well, he's a military from the 60s. What do you want to know? Anyway, time travel or time displacement. Uh, you might say the devil's in the details there negative entities and dark forces and dark people. It's a cell phone. Anyway, the whole time travel thing, the naked time, they get drunk and they discover time travel. That's how it happens in Star Trek. They reach a higher state of consciousness and discover time travel. And then they use it to save the whales in the fourth film, right? But this is the other slingshot around the Sun Maneuver episode, is it not? Uh-oh, uh I gotta smoke again. My drink is my personal beaming game. I mean smoking, a drinking game, something like that. Oh, now he's wearing blue. I'm glad I used the blue lighter instead of the red. I was thinking of using both and making it purple because he looked purple, but I stick with blue and... Oh, he is still purple. Now I'll use the red lighter now. Fascinating. Now this would be interesting. The eyebrow. Is this Spock or the Rock? Spock, says he. You're getting back to the future level part problems layering up here. The adjustment bureau, you're getting ripple effects. Speaking of not being able to tell people about things. Captain's log, stardate 3113.9. First on Spock Time wars are upon us. This episode, of all episodes, that they have to quantify their Star Trek, Star Trek time travel, in all the episodes it could be, it's got to be the ones that connect with Roswell and Hollywood and all that. And this is back in the '60s, before Stanton Friedman did his '70s research and '80s Bob Lazar boom and all the rest. Why did they use these specific references? And why the hell haven't you seen this computer before, Kirk? You think you would be st uh, Starfleet studying the origins of man getting into space would be like patriots knowing the Constitution. Oh, wait. Never mind. Um, they didn't watch enough Star Trek and have Kirk recite the Constitution to him enough. People... T I challenge you to go to D.C. today and find anyone that actually knows what the hell the Bill of Rights are. It's like going to church and asking people to recite the Ten Commandments. They're probably not as good at it as they think. Now, George Carlin can break down the Ten Commandments, but that's a whole other story. I'm not allowed to disclose stuff about aliens, you know. Come on, Kirk, you got to overcome people with the maneuver with the pineal position of the door more is this disc like overly purpled or is that just the lighting in the episode these 
That doesn't look gray, the machinery there, the the film reels and such. It looks purple. It's weird. But everything, all the other colors look right, so it must be the lighting on the show. Oh. Doors of light. Doors of perception. Intruder. Why is everyone here wearing purple? Or is the color off on my... Deciphering that which is not yet seen in a dark room, but they bring light with them. And then these guys don't shoot open the door, but they open it with light. Then guess what? They can see things they're not supposed to see. It's all the symbology going on here. And Kirk with the great symbology is going to overcome them by going through the door of perception but holding on to the pineal position. I know I remember seeing him do it. I've talked myself into it this whole episode. He's got to do it. Ascend. From three ruffians, no less, trying to steal the secret knowledge from Hiram Kirk. Inside a room made of masonry. Look at the walls. Here he goes! There it is! Yes! I love the music. It's like ballet. It's like a Nintendo video game. And instead of the people being blue, they're purple. Because of the bad coloring on Nintendo. When Kurt, when Someone needs to add 8-bit uh, Nintendo sound effects to that fight. Ah, oh, Sully's out. See, like, like the... Uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Shin Su Shin, he's uh, he's off again with your Roswell secrets. Or should I say, Admiral Rico Bada, maybe Admiral Stevens, friends of Gene Roddenberry, architect of uh, Operation Paperclip, you know Montauk, Nazis, Hollywood. Time twisting. Apparently, Gene Roddenberry didn't come up with the concept for Star Trek on his own. You think the space f show would be an Air Force styled thing? No, it's a naval styled thing. Navy had power for centuries up to World War II. Air Force was new. Two rear admirals, Bada and Stevens, were they the men in black that came and talked to Spock? The aforementioned suspicious people <laughs> the focus uh, that they had was on uh, Nazi contact with Nordic extra extraterrestrials yeah it's your time for you Christ to uh, go back to earth with your advanced knowledge and w with trust And to lead us on to overcome Saturn, the death cult, Satan, if you will. No, I just know things you don't. This is me talking to conspiracy people. And I know how you feel, Kirk. I know how you feel sitting here in my primitive chair saying you wouldn't believe me. Send it to Area 51. <laughs> mm. At this time, well, no, they had Area 51 at this time. I was going to say Wright Patterson Air Force Base in the T2 Foreign Technology Division. Well, Hangar 18.
<laughs> it's making me laugh. Actually, aren't you from... Oh, that's about accurate, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> of course I fell for that. They set me up. He's probably being held in security sections. Yeah, you know where he is. This is better scripted than Star Wars so called episode seven. But you're not going to get them unless you take me with you. This is Poe actually or not Poe, but Finn having something to actually do. You got a lot going wrong, Bones. Stop your point. You argue with Spock like you're married. You must be the bitch in the relationship. They should cast Dwayne Johnson as a Vulcan. I mean, as Spock. So Hollywood's changing everything. Make black Spock, if anything. Polynesian Spock. He's got the eyebrow thing rocking. No pun intended. Spock, he's got it Spocking. He's Spocking the rock brow. And Bones... Know your role and shut your mouth. You don't trust me, Spock. It would be illogical to do so. You have your mission. Oh, he does? But only to a certain point. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. I trust you to do your job based on your duties and your oaths. I'm no fool. I got my bong ready. I'm ready to Spock. I mean, I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to rock Spock. I bet Sulu would like to. I mean, everyone would like to rock Spock. Did they make Spock blow up dolls with him? Anima Spock tricks. Those, those $7,000 Asian flesh sex dolls, they should make Star Trek ones. I wanted uh, Yeoman Rand. They might have that. And there, yeah, there they go. Okay. At least these aren't the anal probe aliens. <laughs> you got abducted by the good guys, my man. Chill out. Smoke some dope. Go d talk to Scotty. Go have some scotch. Yeah. We beaming in, or are we just cheaping on the special effects? I'm gonna get a sound effect. Okay, we've already beamed it. Yes, so the Asian booger is back. Whose side is he on? Talking about 1955. There makes me wonder. How much the flags have been mixed up behind the scenes over the last 70 years. Or 65 years. Ooh. You find that painful death? Yes, I do. What's he doing there? We need the exact beam down coordinates for this section of the base. Is it necessary to bring him along? Yeah, it was logical to bring him along. But you notice Spock doesn't wear that out like a Mr. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. It's logical to use it sparingly. Maintain the baddest assery of the cast. Like him being number two, but really number one in Mirror Mirror. Well, yeah, okay, now, uh, you gotta have the necessary drama about it. Well, Kirk, you've done this enough yourself in your own way. Which is makes the interesting question here. There's no right answer. I promise I won't say it. You can't explain your presence on the base. I told you it's my duty to report everything I've seen. I'll just claim amnesia. Oh wait. Okay, he's gone. You'll go home, mister. Time for the Spock nerve pinch. Over my dead body. 
No, over your... Yeah. <laughs> over the... It's a lot better than a neuralizer. Scotty. You have Scotty, man, and his booze. So this is the sequel to The Naked Time. This is the two, second part of that two-parter, in, intended two-parter. Gonna load up my Scotty fuel here. Yeah. Don't worry, he's got his special fuel. <laughs> yeah. Like being drunk? <laughs> it's like driving home from the bar. <laughs> Spock, or Nimoy, who is a boozer, who's analyzing this. He's a... He's anal probizzling this. Let's go for it. Your primary color codes there. Yellow, blue, and red. Dun, dun, dun. All right, here we go. with. And this is the only time they do the slingshot in, in all of Star Trek until episode, uh, the movie number four, The Voyage Home. Of all things, the voyage home, the time warp. It's not literal time warp any more than it is literal beaming. That's light travel. Learning, tra this traveling this matrix and this journey of life by light. But the time warp, it's not time travel, it's time twisting. It's like planets with distorting gravity around them. I was having sort of a Billy Meyer journey through the solar system here, isn't he? Um... And around the sun, of all things, the sun, the source of all light, the gods, the... But of, of all... Mercury, of course, Hermes, Trismegistus, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, and all the rest, the messenger, deliverer of the gods. Counting down to 1313. <laughs> now we're at 1315. Oh, pi, we have pi, now we have 1313. Um, it's like the star date numbers on the minds of the people making this occult stuff esoteric anyway this is the, I thought they'd use this more in Star Trek but they don't they only use it here load special fuel drunk and I think they try that more often, but they never do it again till time to save the whales. What is the significance of that? Is that just the sloppy writing, DC and the rest? No. That's making a point of you achieve transcendence from altered states of consciousness. 
getting in touch with the pineal gland, if all things, the sun, inside yourself, the Horus line, the horizon to the sun, the eye of Ra, you know. <clears throat> the time to go back in time. Bum, 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 bum. Gotta go talk to Doc. What's up, Doc? And the Brother Mason. Down the rabbit hole with you. Doc Vander Van Braun. Mon Doc. Hollywood Disney fame. Ten minutes ought to do it. Twenty minutes should be fine. Ten minutes ought to do it. No, I don't know what's coming next. I'm just in a higher state of consciousness right now. oxygen mask. They neuralized him. The men in black neuralized him. God, this is freaky now thinking of all the UFO cases I studied throughout the 1990s, going back the decades when this stuff happened. And now the military complex knew enough to put it on TV in the 60s. And don't say that ufologists got the idea from this. I'd never heard it referenced at all. They probably don't even know it's here. Man, they've got this time traveled down to a science now. They can repeat its effects and even get people back in the right time and place. Why don't they do this anymore? Because it's not about external mastery and Star Trek is bad. If anything, the occult teaches you to keep things held back. Not for tr just secrecy. I mean, Yoda, you know, he could use the Force a lot more than he does. Why doesn't he? It's not about power. It's about exploration. Not of outer space, but of inner space. Alright, I'm loaded up. But I've got got this thing so loaded, I might blow apart. But there we go. I got my red lighter in honor of you, Scotty, and I'm well scottied up in my special fuel. <sighs> I'm gonna flex, do the Kirk flex my butt in this chair here. Uh, my shocker trees. Shaking, my sphincters tingling. That energy's going up my Einstein Rosen Bridge. Rainbow Bridge to Asgard. Woo! Woo! Whoa, 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 whoa. flesh dolls we we need uh, a few more we have returned home it's metaphorical not just literal oh. wow what a journey life and once again as with the Galileo 7, it was the classic champion tag team of Scotty and Spock that saved the day. Inspired by booze and herbs and higher conscious. Yeah, that's the engine of the vessel you want. That's what makes you go through this experience. 
Yowza, yowza, yowza. Wanna spock it with you? Spock, 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 spock. Da da da. Rock, 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 rock. Secrets of sin, psychedelics, and altered states. Transcend to the Horus line in your innermost 